Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Last Tuesday Free. The Decorating and Staging Academy, have we've been having the Last Tuesday Free webinars for years. We have over 515 people who have registered to be a part of this. We understand so many of you are working or you may be traveling and you can't be on specifically for this webinar. So for your listening pleasure, uh, we will convert these. Um, we will put them on the DSA site. You can find them under the topic learn. And there is a heading now that says last Tuesday free. There's current ones. And then there's some last Tuesday free archived ones. So we're going to get started tonight. We are thrilled. Um, the topic tonight is growing your business space by space. And I am thrilled to introduce Amy Powers. Amy is our, as you can tell, Amy is a ton of fun. I love your picture, Amy. Thank you. I was going to say, if we could just pull her out of herself, you know, just out of her <laughs> shell, you know, it would be so good. <laughs> oh, so Amy, I'm going to let Amy kind of tell you a little bit more about her, but Amy and Carol Bass is with us tonight out in Nashville. and. And Diane Howard, um, another one of the Decorating and Staging Academy trainers, is with us tonight from Tampa, Florida. Hey, Diane. Hey, hi, everyone. So, and Amy, we've all been in RISA together, the Real Estate Staging Association, the staging industry. So, Amy, I'm going to let you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how you got into staging, and how you even you know, came to know so much about this topic because I'm excited to learn about it. Well, thank you very much. It is definitely a pleasure to be a part of Free Last Tuesday. Is that correct? I can't believe it's the last Tuesday of June. Well, and Amy, that's funny that we used to have it. It was a free webinar and everybody would say, now, when is it? We would say the last Tuesday of the month and they'd say, how much is it? It's free. So finally, we said, <laughs> let's just name it last Tuesday free so that everybody could remember and and um, know how much it cost. Well, this is like, you know, the dollar store. How much is this? It's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Amy. I'll be that's good. Okay. <laughs> well, I that's okay. I'm from Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia area. I was actually born in Griffin, which is a suburb of Georgia. I have lived here most of my life. My dad was in the military, so I was I have been able to travel across the country and the world, and that's been fun. I started staging in 2007. I fell in love with it in 2006, 2007, watching some shows that you might be familiar with designed to sell is one of them with lisa laporta and clive and then sabrina soto was a big influence too as a professional stager on hgtv so i fell in love with the aspect of staging spaces for buyers and not for personal taste that appealed to me and along the way, in, in 2008, February, I joined RISA, the Real Estate Staging Association, and I have been a member of RISA for 10 years. As RISA has grown, my business has grown, I've taken advantage of a lot of their resources, one of them being the RISA Approved Instructor opportunity, where you can teach continuing education classes to realtors, and that has been my number one marketing tool education and communicating the value of staging. I've, I am a state president in Georgia for RISA as well as an elected national board of directors member and that has been a true honor to be a part of that and see how our organization is exponentially growing year after year. And I will be at RISACon, so if you are going to be there, anyone gonna be there? Anyone want to raise their hand? Yeah, let's raise our it? hand. I'm definitely <laughs> going to be there, Diane. Oh, good. Um, good, Jenny, Jean. Awesome. And it's not too late, guys, for you to participate in it. You can get your ticket. Um, and there's, so, I mean, it's Vegas, so there's like tons of hotel options. So, um, so yeah, we all would hope you'd be there. Yes, that's going to be fun. And my uh, HGTV crush, 
Bern Yip will be our speaker, <laughs> one of our keynote speakers. He's my design crush, you know, obviously. Nothing more, nothing less. But <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. Let's get this ball rolling. Do you own your own inventory? So what does that mean? There are all types of in inventory. When we say that, someone could be like, yeah, I have some lamb, <laughs> right? right? But their inventory can include all your accessories, the art, lighting, the greenery, the textiles, linens, rugs, books, decor, accent furniture, and the large pieces, which can obviously take up the most space. And also props. I, I use props in that list as well. So if you own just accessory type pieces, raise your hand. I'm glad you're asking that question, Amy, because I was really curious. So accessories only, we have, um, I would say about 20% of everybody on here tonight, is ex they are accessory only. Okay. So the next question is, accessory and furniture larger pieces like dining room table sofas beds headboards things like that okay awesome you know what we I'd, say about, I'd say it's almost half yeah in fact yeah. okay perfect so so we had accessories and then we have more types of inventory does anyone not own inventory so everybody put your hand down if you already raised. That's not a bad thing. You can raise your hand. We're not going to bite you. Okay, we do have some that do not. And that's have good inventory. because we all start somewhere and some people have niches where maybe that's just not what they want to do. So that's not a negative thing. You can be productive at any phase of your career as a professional stager regardless of whether you have inventory or not. So can we go to the next slide? Yes, we can. Thank uh, you. <laughs> so growing inventory room by room, this is one. Uh, this is a very important way of doing it. One of the things I find to be very important is to grow your business in a way that you're not going in debt and you're actually able to make a profit. So growing it room by room is very important. So you're not overwhelming your resources, your time, your energy. So if you're just starting out, you may be occupied only. A lot of stagers start occupied only, and then they graduate or venture into staging vacants as their momentum and their reputation evolves in their area, their sphere of influence. So that is a way you can start simple room by room. Just start occupied only. Anyone out there occupied only? Um, well, I, uh, yeah, we've got a good number of hands, okay, good number of hands, yeah. Well, I tell you, I was occupied only to start with, and, um, and then I carried a little bit more inventory, and then I went back to um, very specific, I mean, I, they have to buy what I put in there. So, it, and I never thought that would work, Amy, but it's, it's kind of like you said, you start out one way and you might venture to vacants and then venture back. And so, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's interesting. And it's to know which rooms to start with. Right. So when another, if you're going from, if you're starting out and you do want to do vacants, I personally love vacants. It's my passion. It's my specialty you may not have the resources to purchase everything you need and so i'm going to share some tips of what i did to start evolving my inventory so that i owned all my inventory and became independent of third-party rental companies when i first started i did use rental only for the large pieces i purchased all the accessories i had a line item in my invoice that had rental furniture rates which was directly handled through the third party company. And then I had accessory rental, and then I had labor costs, things like that, and then delivery type costs involved in there as well. So whatever I budgeted or charged for the accessory package is what I knew I could spend outside of what I already had on in hand in my 
storage area. So I started growing my business little by little. And you start with accessories, right? That's, accessories to me help complete a space. So I went from just using a third party rental company to rent to own type stores. Like I've used errands when I first start, uh, as I progressed, errands is rent to own. And I, I knew I could use them when my business started growing and I knew I would have some type of monthly regular income so that if I was renting from Aaron, I was renting directly versus the client renting. And so I was paying that bill. So I need to have, I needed to have that income to pay that bill. So the next step after so, that. Wait, now have I, we have a question right now. So you, crazy? we just want to clarify that. So, cause I think what you said okay. is just downright brilliant. So you basically did the rental, but it was a rent to own, like through errands. You're the one signing the contract as opposed to how we encouraged the client to sign the contract. So you basically were getting your own inventory off of the clients. <laughs> exactly. They were paying for it. I love it. Yes. So they were paying for it. You know, I was charging them. So that line in my invoice that I mentioned earlier, when I was using another type like court or Brook or American furniture rental, where all the contract stuff goes directly to my client, to them with errands, I made that line item. I, that was paid to me so that they were always paying me. They never were paying errands. They didn't even have to know errands was involved. That was very important to me. Um, and I picked pieces that were very neutral that I knew I could grow with and, and, and use a different types of homes. So that was important to me. The benefit again of that was I could also charge a little bit more. I could make a little profit off of that. They didn't have to know that sofa living room suit was $140. I could charge $200. So I could make a profit off of that because I am the one that had the contract. The, the next step in my evolution in owning my own inventory after the rent to own was I started purchasing rooms off of what I was uh, charging for rent. So if I was charging $625 for a monthly furniture rental for maybe a small home. And this wasn't the whole bill. That was just the rental furniture bill. So don't freak out when I say 625, it would add up to 2,400 or 3,400 and so forth. But if I, I made sure every invoice that I was in every house I was staging, I would purchase a room full of furniture or a good piece, a large piece from that. So I would, let's say, um, I rented the dining room and the master bedroom, I would purchase the living room set. And then I would switch it out each time that I staged a new home, I would purchase a different room. And, and that snowballed very quickly to having 20 or 30 houses full of furniture at one time. And then over time, it's even grown from there. So I was able to wing myself off of, as I was paying off the rent to own agreements with errands, I was able to wing myself off of using them at all and then become 100% completely control of my own inventory, my own pricing. And it, it just was huge impact on having the control on my side, scheduling and everything so now where I purchase only things and I do not have to rent anything. Amy, that's brilliant. We do have a great question. As your business grew, how did that affect your warehouse? So did you also upgrade warehouse space or did you buy one yes. that you could grow to, with? We, we are going to talk about that. Oh, good. Enough. All right. See, I told you guys that could happen. <laughs> Oh, well, wait. that's why we're here. We're here talking about storage, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the other stuff was just free, LOL. <laughs> Last Tuesday free. 
So what type of storage, storage spaces are available? So we're gonna get into that. And if you need me to answer your question more specifically, and you feel like I did not answer that properly, please feel free to you know, type it out, you know, a more specific question because I don't want to not answer your question. That's important. So the types of storage spaces is personal property. Have you seen the, the meme or the little graphic where you have Bill Gates and some other people, they all started in their garages, right? So I think all successful business people start in their garages or some space in their home. It could be their basement storage area or an extra bedroom. But I believe at some point we usually all start storing our pieces in our home. Is that correct? Y'all feel, Carol? Uh, absolutely. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I, I still have it. <laughs> A lot of it in my garage. <laughs> Well, I was thinking not well, only do we use our own garages, but we use our own children, our family to move it. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we can evolve into a storage facility. Storage facilities, and we'll talk in more detail about the pros and cons of that in a few minutes. But the good thing about storage facilities is it can grow. They can grow with you. You don't have to invest in a lot of money up front. And it actually, initially, most storage spaces buy one month, get one free or half off the you know, first two months, something like that. So it's a way to kind of also wean yourself into building momentum into storage. And then you have rent, subleasing rent is you can rent warehouse, you can sublease, you can share that with maybe another stager in your area if you need a share space. Lease to own is obviously where we all would like to be at some point is where we're leasing space and then we're obviously going to own it or outright purchasing a space can you think of any other types of storage anyone use anything differently any ideas um well one um, option and it's funny that we said this because we did it for a job and i would not have thought of it as a type of storage but it was truly pods or um, I think it's called Rat Pack is the other one. But I knew somebody and we kind of planned it out for her. It was not me personally that, okay, you need a house that is traditional, that is going to require living room, dining room, two bedrooms. Okay, we're going to bring pod number 392 here kind of thing. So that pod would be delivered and then then placed. And then when it got finished, then that empty pod would come back and you could fill it right back up. Yes, that's an option too. Very much so. Any any other options out there? Anyone use anything other than what I listed? Okay, let me just make sure. And Carol, are you looking at? Yeah, okay, good. Actually, I'm looking too. you. I think Go you ahead. covered them, Amy. That's awesome. I tried to. I mean, I've been around the block. Not <laughs> your you first have, rodeo. <laughs> do you have any questions about what we talked about so far? I think we're good. I think so too. So the next question is, is it time to increase your space, right? So mm -hmm. room by room, space by space. So you can go on. You did it right. Okay. Good. <laughs> so finding the right type of storage, we're going to talk about the negatives first. So in a storage facility, you have space limitations within what's available in that storage um, facility. Sometimes they may be very full. Sometimes they may, you know, just not have the right size that you need. One thing I did, I always look for the ones that are being built and I always find out how much their cost their costs are if I need if when I needed to. And I was able to negotiate several larger spaces when I did that at a new facility versus one that I had been at where they were becoming more and more full of capacity. Um, so access and hours are a limitation in the storage facility. I believe mine closed at 10 and didn't open back up to six. So if you had, if you're running behind on something, had to drop something off at 1030, you couldn't get into it. Organization limitations, because you have limited space, 
sometimes it's difficult to be able to organize your items the way you would really like to. I have brought in all kinds of shelving. I brought a tip that I have for you in that area is um, I bought this at Target, the rolling carts, the shelving units that are vertical, put them on wheels so you can put them in the hallway of the storage unit and have more space inside if you are wanting to you know, maneuver and get around. We would put a table, prop a table in the middle of it and use that for packing. And then we would have our rolling cart. So that was very easy and convenient. And I really like that. Getting in and out. Some of the storage facilities have elevators that can be cumbersome. You, they, they, they do not have the truck uh, decks that may be more convenient. You have to compete with other people using the space at the same time, especially if you are doing things on the weekends. And that can slow you down, that could cost you more time, and that can be mo money, especially if you have people helping you that you're paying. The price per square foot is more than you would pay if you were renting from a warehouse space or purchasing your own. Typically, there's no office space or opportunity for you to have a business address, so that can be a limitation. And restrictions, what I mean by that is you sign this long contract, some of them some of them say no candles, no food products, no, uh, you can't paint. I actually painted in mine one time and I had to clean it up. I, I forgot spray paint sprays <laughs> uh, <laughs> over, over and beyond what you're actually painting. <laughs> so it had a nice little orange glow on the floor and it was very obvious AB Powers had sprayed that. <laughs> because they also have cameras. <laughs> I did deny the it. The orange didn't it was, give it away. <laughs> the, orange, the orange definitely gave it away. <laughs> so those are some negatives to renting a, a storage facility. And Amy, so here's some negatives. Um, yes. Amy, on the storage facility, uh, there's also those that are air conditioned or climate controlled and yes. those that are not. And, that's and the I have leased both and I will pay the extra to have the climate control because of my artwork and mm -hmm. things like that. It just starts to come undone. Do you, you want to speak to that a little bit? I absolutely agree that to me, that's not even an option. You sh there's no comparison. You have to have climatized because there's bugs and things that can get into right. and on climatize as well and so protecting the investment of your inventory you definitely want to have that climatization yes thank you that's a great thing for me to add to that as well and i'll tell you one thing that i had and i would have never thought about it um was the when you have getting in and out because i'm in park city utah one of the storage units i rented it was like a sheet of ice. They did not do a very good job of maintaining right in front of my storage unit. And every, it's, you know, other places were okay, but you don't know that until you have the, the obstacle that you're having to overcome. That's true. It's very true. So renting a warehouse, I, there's limit, there's not as many negatives, obviously, compared to storage facility. So the negative to renting a warehouse is you have more responsibility for overhead. For the storage facility, they're paying for all the utilities, they have security, you, and things like that. So when you rent your own warehouse, you need a, do you need security? If you do, you have to pay for that. You have to have that set up specifically for your needs. Utilities, I believe my warehouse, they pay for water, and I pay for gas, electric, as far as utilities go. Insurance, you wanna have the right type of insurance for the space, not only for the space, for the people that are entering your space and uh, the maintenance. Does your lease say, or your rental agreement say, you're responsible for taking care of the toilet if it, if it has plumbing issues, or does your lease agreement allow the office or the 
property management company, do they take care of it? So having that information is very important. And the rental warehouse could have a six month to 12 month or three year commitment. Uh, so knowing the terms and how long it could be. And the reason that can be a negative is if you are growing exponentially, you do not want to be tied down to a contract where you are in a space that you can't fit into anymore. So having the ability to get out of that contract is very important. Customization limitations, you may not be able to paint it to so that it's, if you have office space that it's welcoming and inviting, you may not be able to change out carpet or put certain types of things on walls that you may need for your own storage needs as you're storing furniture there. And you're also subject to terms of the lease agreement. There's, you know, not just the amount of time, but there's other things that can be in there and so forth. So that's the negative. Owning your own warehouse, you're still gonna be responsible for all the overhead. It, it's obviously gonna, a mortgage is gonna be a long-term commitment, but, and you have to pay for all the costs to customize. Building the shelving units, and this goes with renting a warehouse too. Anything you need to effectively store your art, for example, your rug, accessories, you have to you have to build it up yourself most of the time. Any questions about that? We do have one from Susan. Susan's saying, would lighting, I think, Susan, your question came in, be an important factor also? I, I think you were talking so. about renting warehouse space, Susan, at that point. When your question came in, would lighting be an important factor also? Yes. Um, you said I, you pay for electric. I pay for electric, but I also, in warehouses, you have the more expensive light bulbs and you have to pay for the light bulbs to be replaced. Okay. Yes. So that can add to your cost. That's a good consider. point. Okay. Okay. Yes. So moving on to the positives, storage facilities can expand as you grow. My first unit was probably a 10 by 10. My second unit was probably a 10 by 20. And then I remember I had four or five 10 by 20s and a 10 by 10. I had them all organized. Actually, it was the most organization I think I've done <laughs> in my adult life. It was pretty cool um, because I found we were able to get in and out much faster if I organized that space pretty well. So we had that and so I had it, it growing and then I was spending 12 to $1,500 a month when I started spending that amount a month for storage units, I was like, oh, it's time for me to rent. So it is good though, as you are starting to grow, finding those spaces that work for you so you're not having it all in your house and it's not overwhelming. There's no maintenance. You don't have to worry about maintaining anything. If something, if, if the, you know, the lights blow out, you just go to the office and say, hey, there's a light out and they take care of it no utilities insurance can be provided most insurance companies if you don't already have existing insurance proof of insurance they they offer that for your pieces on site if something were to happen to them on site it's a, most of most storage facilities are secured you have to do a punch in code to get in and out of the gate in and out of the door one positive advantage of that is if you have people working with you, you can give them a security code, but then if something were to happen and you terminate them, you can change that security code. So even if they were to have keys, they still can't get in the building. So that I thought was a very positive feature. And there's usually a month to month commitment. You're not tied down to a long term commitment. So that can be helpful, especially if you're starting out and you don't have all the relationships that you're anticipating. Uh, and it might be the time of year where you're naturally slower. So you don't want to have this month to month, com um, this long term commitment, um, especially starting off where 
you're paying larger amounts in slower times. So that can be very helpful. So positives, go Amy, ahead. You have a question. Go ahead, Amy. Sandra. Oh, oh this no, is Diane. Diane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I had my storage, um, I went to a new facility, like you said, and was able to work a deal with them. And they happened to have a truck on site. Yeah. And for the first month, I could rent that truck for any job that I had. And it was a nominal. In fact, there may not have been a, a it might have been a part of the agreement um, to get residents in, you know, to get people in to um, store their things there. So I don't know if you all have had that experience, but some of them do have trucks that you can rent. Now they're going to have some advertisement on them, you know, so you're driving around with, you know, ABC rental company on it. Yeah. Um, but it was a source of transportation with, for me when I started. Yes. And every time at the place I rented from, if you rented a new unit, you got, you were able to use it for free uh, up to a certain amount of miles. So that was very helpful. I would always take advantage of that as much as possible. And yes, that is, that is definitely a positive. Thank you for adding that. Another, so, we have another question, and uh, Amy, mm -hmm. before you go back, um, Lynn wants to know what is the percentage of profit you should allocate for storage facility versus rent versus own? In other words, uh, what, how much profit are you making for you to decide, okay, it's ready time for me to get out of a storage facility, start to rent a warehouse, and now I'm ready to own? That is a great yeah. question. That is a great question. Tough question. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to answer that straight up. but I, I was glad it was you and not me. <laughs> but I, but I can, land. on the reciprocation <laughs> side of that, I can answer it. It's where you're, you're asking about profit, I can a answer based on expenses. When you are starting to spend so much money on, on, in your time, you also have to consider the amount of time. So storage facilities, you're going to spend a little bit more time getting in and out and using that space. And cause you got to lock everything up, put everything back in when you're done and you have to maneuver if you're in an elevator in and out. And so that can take time. So you have to start looking at the amount of time you're spending um, and include that in your expenses as well as the square footage. How much are you spending per square foot? So when you start spending more per square foot than what it costs to rent per square foot, and it's becoming exponentially a little bit more and more expensive and inconvenient because of the time, that's when you start looking into warehouse space. Did that answer your question? Yes, at, I, think, at all? I think that's a good one, yeah. And then, Lynn, owning, I I got you. Go ahead, and then owning versus the renting of the warehouse to owning the warehouse, I would say you have to be very established and have probably, you have to have good business credit so that I say would be a longer term goal, maybe a five year goal versus, you know, a year out where you might start renting warehouses and things like that. So five year goal. So you just want to do what is best for you and your business model in that scenario. That's what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So rent warehouse. I haven't done that, right? No, I haven't. No. I know. Okay. <laughs> so there's no limits on your access. You can, if you have the keys, you can go in and out of that at the, your convenience. The price per square foot is going to be less. You may have to rent a larger space because there might be limitations on the amount of square feet that you can get at one time. And usually most of them have the lift gates or some kind of dock for you to pull the truck up to. So the access is way more convenient, way faster to get things on and off the truck. The labor, you're gonna save some money on labor. Most warehouses have some type of office space too. So you can take all your office 
stuff that you have at your house and bring it to your actual warehouse. I will tell you that is another way that my business started growing exponentially too, is when I stopped working out of my house and I actually had allocated place to work with the exception of taking my laptop home and doing some contracts and things like that. But having most of my things in, in my work environment versus my home environment played a huge impact. And you can plan for growth a little easier. You can rent a space that's maybe a third larger than you actually need, but you can grow into that. And that extra space, you maybe could sublease, maybe to an artist or to a movie company that might need a little extra room to store some of their things. So you can monetize that a little bit and, and help pay your rent as well. And then there's better, better organization control you will be able to put up the shelvings where you want to. You'll be able to paint those pieces that just need a little extra updating versus buying whole new pieces. So if you think about how you can utilize the space as well, that can help save you money as well. Any questions on that? Not yet, but All right. um, I'm, I'm going to sure move right thinking on. on it. So owning a warehouse is very similar to renting in this scenario. You're going to have no limits on your access. Your square footage is going to be less. You're going to have better access, office space, more than likely, more opportunity for planning for growth, better organization, but there's going to be no restrictions at all. You own it. You get to decide what's going on. And also you can still monetize if you have, more space than you actually need right now, you can also sublease that or, or rent that out. If you're owning it, you're renting it versus subleasing. So those to me are the positives of finding the right type of space for your storage needs as you are growing and building your inventory. Did, did you all like that? Was that helpful at all? Everyone Raise your hand raising. if you thought that was helpful. I'm expecting everyone's hand to be raised. Uh, they're going up. <laughs> there they go. Oh, very oh, helpful. <laughs> yes, indeed. Look at them go. <laughs> Thank you very much, by the way. <laughs> it's like, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Can y'all think of any other pros and cons? I think you covered I, it, Ames. I tried. I tried my very best. So that's good. That's always a plus. So the next one, the slide is about counting cost. So this is very much, you wanna make sure whatever investments you're making and planning for toward the future, that it's practical and it's, it's helpful. So I just thought this little circular, oh, what's this called, a graph was really yeah. cool. Yeah, that is um, good. So you have your upfront cost and for any space, it's going to be your rent, and for rental and owning, you may have to pay a little bit more upfront closing costs or an extra month's rent. It could also be setting up all the utilities. It could be what you need to get the space organization ready, building shelving units, purchasing the shelving units, paying people to do that, help to help you do that or do it for you in a perfect world. <laughs> And then you have your monthly recurring cost. How much is your rent? How much is it for your utilities on average? And, and you also have to consider your labor. Do you need people to help you on a regular basis? Opportunity cost. Are y'all familiar with what that is? No, I'm not. Opportunity cost is the opportunity or the benefit or lack of benefit from an opportunity that may be available to you. So an opportunity cost, we talked about monetization. You have, you, you grow, have a space that's a little bit bigger. It's an opportunity for you to make some money off of that. Having the, your own space and your own control is an opportunity for you to invite people that maybe real estate agents or, or sellers or investors that might want to see how you're doing things. It allows you the freedom to 
to do things a little bit more outside of what you could do if you just had a storage unit or are you storing things in your home does that make sense it does it does that's good good there are types yeah. of tax savings did you know that Oh, tax saving. Okay, that's a. I love to save money on taxes. Tell me, Amy. <laughs> so, uh, for Tell renting a store and, and for renting warehouse. Now, I'm not an accountant, so you know, always verify. And I am from Georgia, so what might work in Tennessee may not work in Georgia. But you know, you know how that can work. Although I guess that is IRS. I guess that's federal. <laughs> Never mind. It should work. It's universal. <laughs> So the tax savings, when you're renting, you can get tax deductions off of that. So you can get that back. If you're owning, you're getting a depreciation value versus a tax deduction. So don't ask me what that means. Don't ask me the difference between a deduction and depreciation. But I do know that a deduction is more, is, a, is you'll get more money back versus a depreciation. I look at it money back. I look at it like it's, money it's back. a different line item. <laughs> yes. So if you're owning, you also have the opportunity for your the property value itself to appreciate. So you can consider that accounting a cost or a benefit of cost. So that can be in your favor. So when if you're if you're buying or you're, you're you own it and you do outgrow it, you can sell it, take that money and put toward a larger space. So increase in business equity as your business is growing and you're renting, you have utilities, all that is going to have um, the ability to impact your business credit and your value. The investment you put into your business is going to increase that equity. What is left over after everything is done is going to be higher than just renting storage space and so forth. And you know, Amy, what I love about this too, because we all get, I think, especially in the beginning, so caught up with you know, oh, let's go get a client and let's go stage this home to sell. And and you forget sometimes that, I mean, here's some very valuable um, points to remember this, you know, you have to count these costs. We also oh, have, go back? Uh, Carol. Go back? Sandra, I'm not yeah, done. We also oh, have Carol, Carol Clark. Yeah, uh, Carol, Carol, hey. Clark. Can you hear me? I, oh, now I can we can. Now. Okay, I'm sorry, I had muted myself. Uh, also, Carol Clark had to say depreciation is a free deduction that you don't have to pay out to get a deduction. Oh. Thank you, Carol. I think I remember you from another webinar. Isn't your husband an accountant? <laughs> Good to know. Okay, let me say that again. Depreciation is a free deduction that you don't have to pay out to get a deduction. All right. Because if you're renting, you had to pay out that rent in order to get that deduction. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Now we know. So we talked about asset price appreciation. And then my last little graphic in the circle is money earned in the sale of property. So that's not just, you think about if you're purchasing it, you can sell the property. But a twist on that for stagers is when you rent your own warehouse or you own your own warehouse, you could actually have the opportunity to sell, to have a sell of your inventory so that you can turn around and purchase more updated pieces. So you, you lose that restriction. You cannot do that in a storage facility. You might be able to put something on Facebook market or Craigslist and say, meet me here, but you can't have an outright sell. And I know this is a, that was a fun little twist. I hope y'all enjoy that. But <laughs> Isn't that creative? That's something that is is a perk, it's a plus for having that control of the spaces. Love it. Well, and Carol says, no, her husband is not an attorney, but she has her MBA. Yes, indeed, Carol, go girl. Yes. <laughs> okay, keep going. So more deciding factors. 
the number one to me the number one most important factor when it comes to having space for me to store my you know inventory what do you think that is location well, location location <laughs> location <laughs> very good we yeah. get a star <laughs> Location is very important. Location can help you get to where you need to be. So you have to think about who who are my ideal clients? Where do I go the most often? What is the easiest place for me? I live in Metro Atlanta and traffic is, is horrible. I live north. So I, I, ha I live in a place where I could get on Georgia 400, I can get on I-75 and then 285. I have to position myself where I'm not going to be stuck in traffic a third of my time while I'm out trying to stage a house. That is very important because if you are having, if you're in a location where you think I'm going to save some money, I want to put my warehouse in a place that's a little further out, save a little bit of money. But if you're in a place that has traffic, you have to consider all your labor costs. My labor cost is probably one of the most expensive things it's it's way more than my rent my rent is a drop in the bucket it just feels like it's more because your rent's fixed and your labor can vary but making sure that you're in a position location that you have that mobility and you can't get in and go out and back in without spending as, as spending as little amount of time as possible Another deciding factor is how much space do you want? My first warehouse space was 3,000 square feet. That was great, especially um, for the where I was as far as growth. But is that enough? Do you need more than that? Do you need less than that? So you have to consider how much space that you need. Function. The flow, of, just like we do in staging, every space has function, flow, and even in your own warehouse office space, you want to make sure that you have the right type of space. Um, so a warehouse space that has a lot of built-ins or more office space versus a very open plan may be more restricting for you when you have bigger pieces like sofas and things like that where an open plan would be better. Um, some of the things I've done where I've had more office spaces or I've had office spaces, um, I would put things like my linens in those rooms. Um, those are more climate controlled where the warehouse, you have the big lift gates. You're going to be exposed to more heat or cold when those gates are open, depending on the time of year and which could also bring in bugs. So in office spaces that we didn't need, we would put art, we would put our linens and, and towels and things like that we didn't want dirty and, or dusty or even uh, moist because of you know humidity in the air so that's how you, how you're going to function and, and plan that space out is very important and, and that goes with design that's right beside design making sure that it's all functional and and organized appropriate and then climate control Again, some spaces are going to be more climate controlled in a warehouse envi environment versus the spaces that might be near the, the, the lift gate. Do you know Gina? Uh, my goodness. Tiny Gina. You know who McNew, I'm talking about? Gina McNew. Yes, thank you. Gina worked with me for about a year and she could not handle the cold at all. So whenever I had her in the warehouse, I mean, she actually brought her her Florida Gator uh, uh, house coat, and she would literally wear her house coat. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I had did. pictures of her. It was fun. So I I ended up buying space heaters for her in every room that I knew she would be. <laughs> so oh, she would funny. always be as warm as possible. That's so I, another deciding factor is: Do you want to monetize? Do you want to take that? responsibility and having someone um, share a space with you. Risk management. Risk management to me also is what are the risks involved with having certain 
what is the commitment? Do you have the regular income to take care of, of your of your expenses? Um, do you have the security? Do you have the staff and the right things in place to make it work effectively? Or do you really need to just stay scaled back until you're at that level where you do not have as much risk necessary? So any questions? Can anyone think of any other really cool things that could be considered when deciding to move up to larger spaces? Well, and there's also the the insurance too. I mean, you have to That's carry a risk, different isn't it too. Thank you. Type of policy to cover yeah. the insurance on your goods. Is this right. your warehouse? No, this actually I I stole off of the SPE class uh, <laughs> <laughs> section of our class. It's the warehouse. I think I would be surprised if it was Todd's or Michelle's at some point. That um, is a form of flattery. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> let's, yes, indeed. Well, one thing, if you notice, you notice the the racking in this picture. Uh, that, that's probably the best way to store chairs, and chairs are probably going to be the number one most difficult thing to store because there's so many of those, and they are just, you know, odd shaped. But also the wrapping, this is with counting cost. You have to think how you're going to protect the pieces in the warehouse from things coming in and out all the time. So that's an expense as, as well. So for a little recap, you have to consider what type of storage will work for your needs. I hear some background noises. I know. Uh, Diane, are you multitasking? Oh. I'm sorry. I was making dinner. Okay. <laughs> How dare you? Just put I it on me. Pasta. Yeah. <laughs> She's I'm over sorry. there stocking the warehouse. And we're all hungry. <laughs> okay. I'm on mute. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this under an hour. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> I can't believe it has been an hour. I thought for sure this would be like 10 minutes. Well, you know what? It's when it's good material and you have good questions. It does. It just kind of goes. So, um, so keep going. I'm sorry. We interrupted you, Amy. It's okay. So for a recap, ask yourself what type of storage will work for my needs and be realistic. Don't set false expectations. That will protect you from growing or, or spending more money than you need to because the goal is for you to make money, not spend money unless you're, you know, going to Vegas and you just want to have fun, right? So the, another, the next thing is, is your storage appropriate for your growth rate? Are you finding that you are bringing more furniture back and you just don't have space for it, so you're having to rent more storage units each time that happens? Or it, are the houses that you're staging part of your storage plan? That, that can be true. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Where I, I'm in a position right now, if I were to have every piece of furniture back into my storage facility or my warehouse facility, I wouldn't have room for it. And we hope that isn't the case. You're probably managing your time effectively, your schedule, so that you're staging and destaging on top of each other. So, but make sure that you are prepared for the growth rate that's appropriate to your business. And have you made a pro and con list for you? We all have things outside of what we talked about that might be uh, an effect, uh, a reason to have pros and cons. So make that list. Does the cost make sense, right? Is it worth the investment or are you gonna actually make more money? Is it gonna be freeing and give you a, a more opportunity for growth? And have you factored in all the needs that are important for your business plan, your business model, and so forth like that. So those are things that you should be asking yourself. And I think that's, that's uh, it. That was awesome, Amy. <laughs> if you guys want to get in touch with Amy, 
Here is her contact information. Uh, this was a lot to process too, especially if you're just starting down that exploring path about storage, how to handle this, how to, you know, room by room. So feel free to call her or reach out to her with her email. Um, and Amy, I don't know if you heard me in the beginning, was recently named one of the top 100 most influential people in real estate staging. So, um, so Carol and I were too, but we just want to give her a shout out. Um, we're going to well, take. Hang on just one second, Sandra, before you move along. We did it. They were typing as fast as they okay. can. Okay, good. And Lynn says, I search for location and access to arteries for choice. So she's making sure she's near all the major arteries. Then Jenny has a question that says, do you incorporate the storage fee to the staging? That's a good one. I do not have a line item that says storage. That's the cost of doing business. That's part of what you have to do in order to run your business. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to know that they're paying for that. I don't let them know what all they're paying for. That's my business, not their business. So mm -hmm. I have just a, a labor you know, slash um, that, that covers all my overhead on my line item and I have a per percentage of what I charge goes toward that but they don't know what that is it's just kind of like shipping cost. and delivery <laughs> handling and shipping so you should make it part of your budget as far as pricing goes but how that works how you know whatever your overhead expenses are um, you have to make sure that that is part of it yes so answer is yes but don't line item it right Does that makes sense yes. perfect I think that's it Sandra go okay um so guys we just wanted to let you know we love bringing you last Tuesday free um, we are going to take the summer off um, I don't know if I'm really going to take the summer off with a move ahead of me, but um, but so we'll come back in the month of September and some great new topics out there. But again, if you guys will just take a minute and if you want to know um, where the last Tuesday freeze are, just drop down under learn where it says on demand learning and then you'll see a t uh, menu item on that page that says last Tuesday free. So give me about a week and this one will be up there. Thank you guys so much. Um, we'd appreciate it too if you go to Amy's Facebook page and give her a like if you haven't already liked the DSA on Facebook. And the other thing is if you haven't joined um, the decorating and staging group, uh, we'd love to have you part of that. Carol did an awesome job last week. She um, told some stories that um, read some from the book, her book, If These Walls Could Talk. And so you need to go look at that because she has a great little proposition for you. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate you and um, look forward to catching up with you in September and hopefully Amy and Diane will see, and I will see you at Vegas at Resacon. Oh, there was some others on there. I just couldn't get sure. through them all. So oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So come up and say hey. <laughs> and congratulations, Amy. Wonderful job. Thank you. Yeah, you're getting all kinds of thank you. I really enjoyed it. You're oh, so great. Very good. So, well, <laughs> now, don't hold back on that. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> got all kind of time. Um, all right, Diane, you can go make dinner now. Okay, oh, now, yeah. hey, which <laughs> link does Lynn yeah. want? Which link does Lynn need? Oh. Oh. Lynn, type which link you want. Okay, back up. Back up. She wants Amy's link. You want the link to her? For social media, if you'll back up to Amy, she's got. Um, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Together, that's okay, why we have so back many up. There it is. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Amy herself. Got and it, guys. All right. Thank Got you, guys. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.